Hey, well, it's Hawk, and I want to apologize, first of all. I had intended to be posting a video, you know, at least every week or so during this whole pandemic thing. You know, largely just, you know, to let those of you who watch my videos to know that, um, you know, despite my less than stellar health, uh, you know, that I'm doing okay. And I don't mean to worry anyone, um, you know, needlessly. And so I apologize that I didn't get a video up. I was hoping to get one up, you know, my Thursday or Friday. Finally, Saturday, I made an attempt to, but it didn't came up, didn't come up very well. The truth is, the last well, almost a week now, I have not been breathing very well. And uh, it's actually, you know, kind of concerned me a bit. Um, I don't feel like my, um, you know, my um, oxygen levels, if you will, have actually been very good the last several months. Um, and I've kind of mentioned it before that, uh, you know, when I get up and walk around or whatever, uh, my numbers seem to be uh, much lower than they normally had been. Um, but for whatever reason, the last four or five days, particularly though over the weekend, um, I was really bad. In fact, um, yesterday and I guess Sunday, I virtually couldn't get myself off of the oxygen, um, even just sitting around. Uh, which normally I can breathe okay if I'm not doing anything. Um, but my breathing was actually, I just felt, you know, really labored. Um, it wasn't that my oxygen numbers were, you know, too, too low. It's just that it felt like an effort to breathe if I didn't have it on. And, you know, well, anyway, it wasn't a good sign. And I don't like doing videos when I'm wearing the oxygen. So, anyway, I did attempt to make one Saturday we had an event Saturday here in town. I live in a little town and uh, surrounded by a township, if you will. And um, every year, I guess, just like we have a, you know, a Santa Claus um, shack or whatever, the kids can go in and um, tell Santa what they want for Christmas um, in the weeks leading up to Christmas. They have a, they have a thing where kids can um, get their picture taken or whatever with um, Easter Bunny. Um, here in town. They have a little park right downtown, uh, right near the, you know, the city square or whatever. But uh, this year, of course, they had to do away with that, uh, you know, given the, you know, the, the you know, the stay-at-home guidelines and everything. And so they decided to do something a little different this year. They encouraged all the youngsters to make chalk drawings or signs or type of craft or whatever to welcome the Easter Bunny. And the Easter Bunny, um, in what was probably um, one of history's smallest parades, we um, uh, had a, um, uh, basically it was a four-car parade. Um, the lead car and the, the um, trail car <clears throat> were police vehicles with their lights on. And then uh, there was a there was a pickup truck with the Easter Bunny in the back, in the pickup, um, alongside uh, our high school uh, mascot. And not just any mascot, by the way. Our mascot, which is an eagle, um, won a national competition just this past fall um, as best high school mascot in the nation. In a competition, I guess, that um, ultimately was decided in um, in a contest that was held at, um, at Disney World, I believe, in Florida. At any rate, and, uh, and then, of course, I think the fourth vehicle, I think the mayor uh, was in a vehicle there as well. So they made their way around every street in the in town and in the township. I've got the hiccups, and I just... I don't know where that comes from. I hate those. Quite annoying. Well, at any rate, so I tried to make a video um, with that kind of going on in the background, but the trouble was, I don't know what kind of route they took. You know, um, our little town has a number of small little streets, and unfortunately where we're located right here on the edge of town, we were like one of the last streets, neighborhoods, uh, to finally, you know, um, be on the, on the route. 
And so there was a lot of, I mean, people were sitting in their lawn chairs in their driveways waiting literally for hours for this parade that if you blinked, you missed, you know, you missed it. So, so that happened, and I tried to make a video, but it didn't come out very well. So I didn't post it, and I wasn't, um, I wasn't in the best of shape. Um, I, you know, I've been watching the news a little bit lately, um, here and there, and I'll tell you, it is pretty grim and pretty depressing, particularly, you know, politically. And, um, you know, kudos to those poor folks in Wisconsin who, um, despite, you know, everything that's going on, were more or less forced to stand up for their democracy to go out and vote today. In many cases, standing in lines that exceeded a half mile in length. Um, and you know how it is. You know, I, I saw somewhere where they have like six polling places in all of Milwaukee. Um, you know, it's the same thing every election year. They cut the number of precincts and the number of polling places in, you know, highly democratic areas, particularly in big cities. You see it um, all over southern Florida, for instance, every election cycle. Um, forcing people usually to make a decision whether they're going to go to work that day or stand six hours in line to vote. Well, in this case, it's a much, you know, even um, graver choice, and that is uh, whether to literally risk your life standing in line. Um, many of these people don't have any protective, you know, gear to wear, whether it be a mask or whether it be, uh, you know, any kind of a, an outfit that can help shield them. And certainly all of the poll workers, in fact, my understanding is that a lot of the precinct workers themselves didn't show up. And so, um, I mean, I heard a report of um, one lady who was the only one uh, in the whole, you know, where there were like several different um, uh, precincts set up in a, in a single location. And yet there was just one lady that showed up. And so she had to uh, take raw volunteers and uh, kind of um, give them last, literally last minute instructions on um, what to do you know, as, as they opened the doors. Um, and the public started filing in because they had never done this before and had no training. Um, but again, most of these poll workers had absolutely no protective equipment and they're seeing people all day. Anyway, um, it's quite evident, they don't even try to make it a secret anymore, what Republicans are willing to stoop to to try to um, steal elections. Um, but it's never been it's never been this bad. And, and the, the Republicans in the state legislature of Wisconsin and, uh, and the Republican-controlled, uh, you know, majority, conservative majority in the U.S. Supreme Court apparently have let it be known that, uh, you know, in 2020, all bets are off. They're going to stop at nothing to try to, um, uh, you know, make it as... Uh, difficult as possible for Democrats to go out and vote. Um, it's just unbelievable. I mean, it, it really, really is unbelievable. And, um, and so, like I say, uh, my hat is off to those um, uh, indomitable uh, Wisconsin voters who showed up, um, it seems, in pretty big numbers, um, uh, saying, you know, you're, this is just evil, and and um, and these folks said, you know, we're going to get these people out of office if it's the last thing we do, and um, I'll tell you, it is um, because I'll be honest with you, with my health, I I don't know that I, you know, would risk it, and um, uh, you know, and I was nearly forced into that myself here in Ohio. We had a um, primary election due March 17th, and at the last minute, just really 24 hours before Election Day, Governor DeWine, who has, you know, to his credit, been um, way out in front on um, this whole uh, coronavirus uh, business and um, has been one of the, um, one of the absolute leaders 
in um, showing the way of how to um, help slow the spread of this virus. Um, he has been helped uh, by his um, public uh, health director, state health director, who graduated, by the way, um, from the high school that's located closest to my own high school, uh, probably less than three miles away, uh, graduated. Uh, she, her name is Amy Acton, and she uh, graduated um, from Liberty High School, which is right near my hometown, and um, we play them every year in, in uh, sports. Um, they were in our league, and uh, and she graduated. Um, she got her medical um, degree from um, um, Ohio's Northeast Community College, I think, or uh, whatever it's called, uh, med School of Medicine. Um, also right here in Northeast Ohio. So um, kudos to both of them. But um, but DeWine uh, made the decision, uh, just like I say, 24 hours before our own election day, that he was not going to um, permit the election to go on as scheduled. And so instead, he ultimately decided that um, he was going to extend um, absentee balloting, which now is really the only method of voting if you haven't already you know that or you know if you need to you can go into the board of elections in your county and, and, and vote then during uh, normal business hours which i think are limited uh due to this pandemic so they're only open uh, certain hours of the week um not their normal hours but at any rate you can apply for and receive an absentee ballot which is what i did and vote um and i think they you have until April 28th to get that in. And, uh, in fact, I just submitted my um, completed ballot here, I think, Saturday and sent it in. So it's still a little tougher to get that absentee ballot than it should be. Uh, but still, that's a step in the right direction. And you know that Democrats nationwide are going to be um, seeking um, some avenue of opening up um, more... Uh, mail, uh, you know, vote by mail options. Um, and Republicans are going to be very reluctant, if not, um, if not uh, adamantly opposed to, to any of it, it appears. If, uh, if uh, you know, if the decision making on Wisconsin is any um, indication, which I'm sure it is. Uh, so at any rate, it, um, it, it was truly troubling, disturbing. And if that doesn't, if that doesn't uh, motivate you to vote and to oust Republicans wherever they are, um, then I don't know what, I really literally don't know uh, what it will take. Um, at any rate, uh, that's what I'm up to, and that's what I've been doing. I hope that you have been staying safe. Um, I know over the next couple of weeks here, I would say closer to the next six weeks, but they're saying over the next two weeks, they really are encouraging people to stay at home and uh, really not risk going out for anything, if at all possible. Um, and uh, that includes, you know, grocery shopping. I have been able to shop online and get my groceries uh, delivered. I think I mentioned um, a little over a week ago, I got some um, my, my first um, groceries delivered by um, an out-of-town grocer called Giant Eagle. I tried to follow that up with a small order to, um, uh, but then I could not get a, an open slot even a week out. So I tried Aldi's, and you can on uh, you can uh, download a an Instacart app on your phone or go on your computer and go to Instacart. And you can order groceries through, um, through all these. Now, they don't have the selection that, um, that your typical grocery store probably does. But, um, but you can get by with what they, they offer. And um, I um, wasn't able to find everything that I wanted. But I'll tell you the truth. Uh, most of the items that they do carry are quality and low-priced. Uh, so you, those are two things you can't complain about Aldi's. For the most part, 
their products are pretty high quality and their uh, prices are low. Um, again, the downside is that uh, if you're looking for certain name brand, brand items, uh, there's going to be, um, you're going to be disappointed. And, uh, and again, you're not going to find, you know, um, uh, much of what you're probably looking for. Uh, however, I was able to um, put together, I think I found about 21 items altogether that I ordered, and um, they are um, due to be delivered here and dropped off on my front porch, uh, I think, on Saturday. So, again, that's um, that should get me through the month. The only thing that I fear I'm probably going to have to go out for um, and I'm debating whether to do this sooner rather than later, is I'm going to, I'm about two or maybe three weeks off from needing certain medications for myself and maybe about a month out needing medications for my dog. And I kind of wonder what things are going to be like at that stage. And um, it seems to me that the danger is only going to increase. But the word right now is that um, to stay put for the next two weeks. So um, I'm probably going to heed that advice and um, not venture forward until I absolutely need to. And then I might even look at some other options to get those medications um, if I can come up with maybe an alternative to going out myself. Um, I really, really um, have a, a lot of uh, respect for those folks who are working uh, through all of this, whether they work um, in some type of um, you know service field, um, food industry of some type, uh, grocery stores or other you know retail outlets, whether they're you know nurses, doctors. Uh, staff at a medical facility, um, emergency uh, first responders. Um, there are so many people that are, you know, um, I have a neighbor who lost her husband here just over a year ago. And, um, you know, she works for an attorney. Uh, and, um, you know, and because the courts are still open, you know, she has to go to work every day. And she's got a you know, she's got like a 12-year-old son at home that, um, you know, so I'm sure she's uh, like all of these people that are um, going out every day. Uh, they've got to be questioning whether they're putting themselves and their families, you know, at, at risk. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. It must be a terrible, terrible burden to uh, be dealing with that. And uh, I give them all my uh, my love and respect. Uh, I want to say a big thank you. Again, I am continuing to get you know the um, some financial support here. That um, uh, unfortunately, despite all of this panic um, and all of this um, what's going on today. You know the need hasn't gone away, and um, and I don't frankly know how that's possible. There are so many people that are, you know, probably worried about, um, you know, whether they're going to be able to keep their businesses or whatever uh, uh, through all of this, and um, uh, so many people that are going to be out of work uh, indefinitely. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know when things are going to get back to normal if, if, if they ever do. I have my own theory that, um, you know, it could be 18 months or two years before anything approaching the kind of normalcy we remember um, returns. Because I think it's going to be that long before we're going to see anything that's really going to um, negate the possibility of... Um, of getting this virus, something like a vaccine or a real effective, um, you know, treatment that that um, negates the possibility that this could be a death sentence for people like like me and others. Um, 
And so as long as that's still hanging out there, I mean, there's a lot of evidence to suggest that this thing's never going to truly go away, that, um, you know, it's going to be like another one of the flus, just deadlier, that's going to, you know, repeat season after season. And so, you know, we can expect this to come back this fall, maybe next spring. And so, you know, I know that there are a lot of people dedicating themselves right now towards uh, finding that, you know, that vaccine or that, um, that treatment. And all I can say is let's, let's hope that that, um, that effort is successful sooner than later. Um, but at any rate, I am, I am more grateful for that help than I've ever been. And, uh, and I'm trying to use that um, help as um, prudently as possible, um, given the circumstances and, uh, you know, in my my circumstances. But largely, I'm doing what I've always done, which is to try to pay down, you know, those debts and um, put myself in a situation where, um, um, you know, where I can uh, be more independent at some point. Uh, anyway, uh, I want to thank all of you for watching please take care of yourself please 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 don't do anything foolish don't uh don't take any risks that are unnecessary at this time um i enjoy hearing your comments and um i would love to hear how you're holding up through all of this and uh thanks again for watching i'll see you again real soon